Hello friends, this video on system of particles and rotational motion part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now on the basis of whatever we have studied so far, that is angular velocity, angular acceleration, uh, angular momentum, torque, let us now try to solve some of the problems to understand the concepts little more clearly. So the first problem states, a child sits stationary on one end of a long trolley moving uniformly with a speed v on a smooth horizontal floor. Okay, so the child is sitting stationary. Fine. If the child gets up and runs about on the trolley in any manner, what is the speed of the center of mass of the trolley plus child? So let us suppose this is a trolley. And this is a child. So in the first scenario, the child is stationary. The child is not moving and the trolley is moving with a speed v on the horizontal floor. And there is no friction because it is considered to be a smooth surface. Now if this child starts moving and running here and there over the trolley, so the question asks what is the speed of the center of mass of the system? So here system means child plus trolley, right? Now, what do we know about the motion of center of mass? We have seen that the motion of the center of mass is affected only by a force. What kind of force it is affected by? It is affected only by external forces. The internal force doesn't play any role on the motion of center of mass, right? So motion of center of mass is affected only by F external that is an external force. So what is an external force? Any force which comes from anywhere outside the system. Now in this case when the child moves there is some force exerted due to the movement of the child. But since the child is a part of the system, this is the entire system. So the child is a part of the system. So the movement of the child is nothing but it is contributing to the internal force. But my center of mass motion is not affected by internal force. Right? Therefore, the net external force acting is equal to zero. Therefore, there is no change in the speed of center of mass. So, no change in speed. Right? You, you got the concept? Because in this case, when the, child, the system is child plus trolley. So, any movement of the child with respect to the trolley is internal is something internal but we know that the internal forces do not contribute to the motion of the center of mass the center of mass motion you remember the equation which we derived the equation which we had derived was something like this mass into acceleration of the center of mass is equal to f external Right? So that means the motion of the center of mass is affected only by external force. So in this case, even when the child is moving or even when the child was not moving in both the cases, the external force is zero. There is no change in the external force. Therefore, there is no change in the speed of center of mass. Let us look at the next problem. It says, show that the area of the triangle contained between the vectors A and B is one half of the magnitude of A cross B. Okay, so this is a problem related to the vector product of vectors. Let us suppose we have a vector A. We have another vector V. So it says that we have to show that the area of the triangle contained between these two vectors is one half of the magnitude of A cross B. So let us do one thing. Let us draw a perpendicular from here and let us make a parallelogram like this. Fine. Let us say that the angle between A and B is theta and this is a perpendicular. Let me call this point as O, this point as P, this point as S, this point as R and this point as Q. Okay, so now let us look at triangle OPQ. So if you look at this triangle OPQ, what do you see? You see that sine theta is equal to PQ divided by OP. 
So this is equal to PQ divided by magnitude of the vector V. So from this we get PQ is equal to V sine theta. Right? So now we have to show that the area of this triangle, which triangle? This POR, because this is the triangle, this POR triangle is the triangle contained by A and B. So we have to prove that area of triangle POR is equal to half of the magnitude of A cross B. So this is what we have to prove. Right? So now let us try to calculate the value of A cross B. So what will be A cross B? Magnitude of A into magnitude of B into sine theta where theta is the angle between A and B. So from this we can write A cross B is equal to A into B sine theta. What is B sine theta? It is PQ. So we can write it as PQ. And what is A? A is nothing but OR. So this becomes OR into PQ. Right? Now if we half it on both sides. So we get half into A cross B is equal to half into OR into PQ. So what is OR? It is this. What is PQ? This is this. So this is nothing but half into base into height of this triangle POR. So this is equal to area of the triangle POR and that is what we wanted to prove. That is half of A cross B is equal to the area of the triangle POR. Right? Okay. Let us look at problem 3. It says show that A dot B cross C is equal in magnitude to the volume of a parallelopipped formed on the three vectors A, B and C. The way a triangle was formed by the vectors A and B. Similarly, a parallelopipped can be formed by three vectors A, B and C. So let us draw a parallelopipped like this. So this is my parallelopipped. Let me say this is vector B. This is vector A, this one. And this is vector C. Right? So now what would be the volume of this parallelopipped? The volume of the parallelopipped will be A, B, A into B into C. Right? That is length into breadth into height. So magnitude of A into magnitude of B into magnitude of C. Now let us calculate the value which is given in the problem. That is A dot B cross C. And let us see if this value comes out to be A, B, C or not. So what is A dot B cross C? So first let us calculate B cross C. What will be B cross C? It would be nothing but B C sin theta. So when we write B C like this, I mean magnitude of B and magnitude of C. So what will be the angle theta between B and C? Now in this, in case of a parallel loop, if A and B are perpendicular to each other, A and C are perpendicular to each other. Similarly, B and C are also perpendicular to each other. So all three are mutually perpendicular to each other. So this theta will be 90 degrees. That means B cross C will be BC. So now we calculate A dot B cross C. So this becomes equal to A dot BC. Right? Now what is A dot BC? This will be, this can be written as A BC cos theta. So what will be theta in this case? Now when you talk about B cross C, what will be the direction of B cross C? It will be the direction along A, right? So the direction of BC will be along A. Now when you, so the angle between A and BC will be 0. So this theta will be equal to 0, right? Because BC is the cross product. So what is its direction? Its direction is along the vector A. So when you dot product it with A, so the angle between A and BC is 0, right? So cos 0 is 1, so this becomes equal to ABC. So ABC is nothing but the volume of the parallel of it. Thank you. 
please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.